From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now on the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Tarzan and the Long Journey. It was noon, and the scorching African sun beat down upon Liago's public square. Under ordinary circumstances, it would have been deserted at this hour, but today it seethed with a sweltering mass of resentful natives. They should be sent back to their village, Captain Lawrence. But I can't disperse them, Tarzan. The message said he'd be here promptly at noon, and it was officially decreed that the entire native population be on hand to greet him. The natives already resent British rule without making the arrival of a new provincial governor an occasion for disrupting the entire tribe. Yes, there's been a great deal of agitation among the natives lately, and I'm worried. That's why I sent for you, Tarzan. I realized I needed some advice. My first bit of advice is that you have a little talk with the new dignitary the moment he arrives. Inform him that you're familiar with the temper of the natives and that he should refrain from issuing further decrees before consulting you. That's the only way to handle things. I think not. After all, he is my superior, and... Ah, here he comes. We'd better try to push our way through to his car. It looks as though a spot of trouble's about... What's that? Someone's throwing something at him. Anything at... Men, disperse the crowd and try to find out who threw that bomb. I saw him, Captain Lawrence, and I'll catch him if I can get through this crowd. You'd better go and gather up what's left of our provincial governor. It's only a miracle that I wasn't killed, Lawrence. I want the would-be assassin apprehended at once. And the Tark of Hindu tribe punished severely. But a native would have hurled an assegai or a poison dart at you, Mr. Inglesby, not a hand grenade. I'm perfectly aware, my dear Captain Lawrence, that a hand grenade is not a native weapon. If a native did throw the grenade at the car, it must have been supplied him by one of the agent provocateurs who have been stirring up trouble in Africa for some time now. We'd be a lot better off expending our efforts locating him than harassing the natives. Naturally. It goes without saying that I'll abide no foreign agents in the district. Have your men scour the entire province. I want all suspicious-looking foreigners brought to me for interrogation concerning the recent accident. A volunteer went after the man who threw the grenade, Mr. Inglesby. But it's impossible to come such a vast area with a complement of 18 men. Suppose you just dismiss the matter, then. I can assure you that I'll have the whole situation cleaned up quickly. I shan't permit gross inefficiency to impede my ambitious plans for the territory. A great many other people have come here with plans, Mr. Inglesby. Uranium is a powerful magnet that draws all breeds of men. You are being very patronizing and very insolent, Lawrence. I'm quite aware the Congo supplies most of the world's uranium. I only meant to point out, sir... I'd like to point out something to you, Lawrence. Knowing that you had a free hand in Liago for many years, I arrived well prepared for your animosity and your envy. And having been told that the natives obey your every behest, the attempt upon my life within moments of my arrival came as no great surprise. <laughs> But we've passed miles and miles of the steel fencing, Captain Lawrence. Has Inglesby decided to fence in all of Africa? I think not. But Inglesby National Park does encompass most of Liago Province, from the Mokino Mountains to just past Livingstone Canyon. It's incredible that he could have laid this out in such a way that the Riantu River lies outside the fencing, cutting off the animals from their chief water supply. Mr. Inglesby plans to build an artificial lake. Oh, I hope he's posted a notice to that effect for the animals. What in the world is he up to, Lawrence? Oh, it's very simple. By building an elaborate hotel and having this enormous animal sanctuary as a show place, he helps to make Liago a mecca for British tourists. 
And with large number of English here at all times, he's sure we need fear nothing from foreign towers. Our need is not for more Britishes, but for more brains than the one we recently acquired. And the jungle is seething with unrest. And no clue yet to the whereabouts of the scoundrel who made an attempt on Inglesby's life, eh? No, I've been searching for him ever since I left here that day, but he's more resourceful than any white man I've ever encountered in Africa. But you did catch sight of him that first day. A fleeting glimpse before he got swallowed up in the crowd. All I can tell you is that he has the most piercing eyes I've ever seen. Cat's eyes. A strange yellow that I could identify anywhere. Hmm. Uh, how's this spot, Tarzan? Oh, fine. Ah. How big an opening do we have to make? At least big enough for the largest animals to get through. We're lucky there's no wind tonight, or they might have stampeded us before we cut a hole large enough to permit a dig dick to escape. Uh, if Inglesby ever learns I had a hand in freeing his animals. Animals are not meant to be caged in. Even in the sanctuary where men are not permitted to shoot them there, they're used to natural enemies, but they can't endure confinement. And furthermore, barring the Cavindus from their source of meat is only aggravating their hatred of England, Lawrence. I know. If only someone like you could go to England and explain to the... I shall help you all I can, but I swore long ago that I would never leave Africa again. Yes, I know. But I thought that... What's that? That's an injured bird from inside the sanctuary. Lawrence, did you see those leather thongs tied to his legs? Yes, what were they? They're called Jesses. And they're placed upon certain breeds of hawks when they're trained as hunting falcons. The instrument of one of the most savage forms of hunting ever conceived by man. Your Mr. Ringlesby hasn't built an animal sanctuary. He's constructed a private game preserve for himself. Hmm. So it would appear. And heaven only knows what other fiendish schemes he has in mind. Although the wind remained still, the jungle animals who'd been confined within the sanctuary sensed that escape was now possible, and Tarzan and Captain Lawrence barely managed to find refuge behind a large rock formation when the stampede began. Someone's ripped the hole of the fencing, filthy sabotage. Get back, Inglesby. The animals will mow you down like a blade of grass. Over there, men. I want whoever's responsible to... Is the madman firing no, at us? No, someone's hit him. The shot came from the other side of the stampede. Oh. Quick, Lawrence, in that high tree! Yellow eyes! I, I, I missed! If only we could capture him! It will be hours before we can get past the animals, and he'll be miles away by then. Give me... Give me something to start the flow of blood, you fools. Yes, sir. Here you are, sir. Give us this. Quickly, get behind these rocks, all of you. All right. We're safe now from the animals. Take Lawrence's gun away from him, men. Yes, sir. I'll have it, Lawrence. Thank you. A little more of the surface wound in my left arm at that. You aren't much of a shot. You, you think that I shot you? Your attacker was the same man who threw the hand grenade at you the first day. We saw his yellow eyes beaming from a tree on the other side of the stampede, but we couldn't get to him. Oh? Perhaps you can explain how it happens that two cartridges have been fired from Lawrence's rifle. Of course I can. Captain Lawrence fired at your assailant. Oh, the man with the yellow eyes, eh? Perhaps he also has a green nose and small pink wings. Did any of you gentlemen hear four shots being fired? No, sir, I only heard two. We were standing behind this rock, and although you were closer to us than you were to him... That's enough, Mr. Jungle Man. Lawrence, we're under close arrest. The charges, insubordination, sabotage, and attempted murder. <laughs> Well, Tarzan, come to entertain me this morning with a few more fairy tales about hobgoblins and leprechauns? I came because I learned that Captain Lawrence has been removed from the military prison. What have you done with him, Inglesby? At the moment, he's uh, probably somewhere over Algeria or, or Morocco on his way to England to be court-martialed. So you've succeeded in getting rid of him, and you plan to stay here as uncontested ruler of the roost. I'm not planning on doing any roosting until I've returned from England. Oh, yes, uh, I'm sailing tomorrow. 
My personal testimony may be required to assure a conviction. You're hardly a credit to British sportsmanship. Must your quarry always be caged before you go hunting? You're most eloquent for a savage jungle man. But it will take more than your words to clear the name of your dear chum. Are you implying that I could serve as a witness at the trial? Who is better qualified? You observed both of Lawrence's attempts upon my life. But I... I have sworn that I would never leave Africa. Well, sorry you won't be on hand to help your colleague. You're quite confident that were I to go to England, you could hold me up to ridicule there, huh? And you think that by discrediting me, you could reflect upon my closest friend. Well, were I to renounce my oath, I might find honest men in England. Men who could be convinced that Lawrence is without guilt... And that you are working against Britain's best interests. It could happen that way. As our mutual friend would express it, I think not. Well, it's black as pitch out here, Tarzan, old man. It's late for a turn about the decks, isn't it? I'd hope to avoid company by waiting until this hour. Oh, you needn't be self-conscious. No one in the world would know that a couple of native women with rings through their noses had done a honey-up job on that suit. You look just like Savile Row. The deck of this ship belongs to the steamship company, Mr. Ringlesby, but the back you're slapping so enthusiastically belongs to me, and I'll be greatly obliged if you desist. Oh, don't be so sensitive. Slap on the back's just a sign of good fellowship. After all, we are shipmates now. I and, told uh, you to... Sp- what in the... Get out of my way, Inglesby. Uh, all right, never mind now. He's gone. I'll see the ship's captain in the morning and I... So someone's still after me, The eh? shot was yards away from you. It would have hit me had I not been dodging your slaps of good fellowship. He was standing in that companionway that leads to the steerage. The man with the yellow eyes? Only a man with the eyes of a cat could have attempted such a shot in this inky darkness. Still stuck with that story, eh? Perhaps you may be stuck with it if I live long enough to voice my suspicions in England. It occurs to me that you conveniently managed to jump clear of your car before the explosion, that this incredible marksman only nicked your hand the other evening, and that now Captain Lawrence is out of your way, he's turned his gun on me. The marksmanship and the resourcefulness are his, Mr. Inglesby, but the orders could be coming from you. The next morning, with the cooperation of the ship's captain and several of his officers, Tarzan searched the vessel from stem to stern, but without success. Unless the man had slipped over the side to an accomplice in another ship or to his own destruction, he was diabolically clever in avoiding the searchers. The following days were tense ones for Tarzan, but no further attempt was made on his life. When the ship docked at the international port of Tangiers, Tarzan was happy to go ashore, and he took the main thoroughfare from the Bab el Marsa gate of the port to the Bab el Sook gate of the marketplace. The native cupboards and cafes were most intriguing, but hardly had Tarzan mingled with a tightly packed throng when two piercing eyes stared out from a darkened doorway. A bullet whistled inches from Tarzan's head, but as he tried to squirm through the crowd, a door slammed, and several international police appeared from nowhere and blocked his path. I've got to get through. I've got to get through that building. Someone shot at me. Please, if I could just... <laughs> Please, can't you understand that an attempt was made on my life? If a beggar hadn't jostled me at the precise moment... <laughs> Do you understand French? Uh, Parlez vous français. Uh, Comprendez vous l'espagnol? You, you, uh, are you not Arabic? Tarif bil Arabi? Ah, uh, international police. You speak the language of no nation. Oh, what do you intend to do with these handcuffs? I've done no wrong. I was merely looking into the shops. Take these handcuffs off me, or I'll... What's going on over here? In a bit of a jam, Tarzan? I've tried to make these fools understand me, but they speak no language. Or at least they pretend to understand none. Here, take this for your trouble and let my friend go. Merci, monsieur. Muchas gracias. No, es que fun luck. You see, Tarzan, money is still the universal language. And there's no more eloquent tongue on earth than the British pound. I shall return whatever you spent when we reach England. I believe I have some money left me by my family in a bank there. I still owe a travel agent in Dakar for my passage. Oh, forget about it, my boy. It was worth every farthing of it to see your face. When the bullet struck the brick wall inches from my head? I know nothing of any bullet. I meant it was most amusing to see your expression when you were surrounded by all those natives. 
Never have I seen greater bafflement. If you look carefully, you can see it now. I can't understand why you galloped your white charger up to my rescue just now. Very simple, Tarzan. Come along, I'll tell you on the way back to the ship. I shouldn't want to be late for the start of Lawrence's trial. Nor I. But you haven't answered my question yet. Well, it really should have been quite obvious to a man of your reputed instincts. A royal warrant gave me certain military as well as civil authority in the Argo. By virtue of it, I was able to ship Lawrence back to England, but I held no such power over you. Your voluntary trip to England in behalf of your great friend enables me to bring you face to face with the men who control Africa's future. I have a strong feeling that they will do everything within their power to keep such an evil influence as you from returning there. <laughs> When the ship dropped anchor at the mouth of the river Tagus, Tarzan's insatiable curiosity forced him to join the excursion that traversed the few miles to Lisbon. But while he feasted his eyes on the strange beauties of the Portuguese capital, he avoided crowds and kept constantly alert. Waiting until nightfall before returning to the dock, he found it deserted, save for the mountainous stacks of waiting cargo. Some primitive instinct made him dart to one side suddenly, a moment before a heavy crate came crashing down. He heard a light movement on top of the pile cargo, and he looked up into a pair of wide yellow eyes. Scampering over crates and barrels and boxes, he lunged toward the transfixed orbs. There was a feeling that there'd been another pair of eyes but a moment before. The small feline had not dislodged the heavy crate. Well, you almost missed the sailing, Tarzan. I thought perhaps you'd change your mind after our conversation in Tangiers. You decided to abide by your oath and return to Africa. I broke that one when I left those beloved shores, Mr. Ringlesby. But tonight I made one to myself that I shall not break. How's that? If I fail to unravel this great mystery, if I fail to clear Captain Lawrence's name and thus fail Africa, I shall never return there. <laughs> for the exciting conclusion of our story. The maddening sounds of London echoed in Tarzan's weary head. The confusion of its streets baffled him. The acrid fog parched his throat. But even these horrors were pale beside the grim inquisition of Captain Lawrence's trial. Tarzan felt as though he'd already spent months in the airless courtroom. We'll have no further outbursts, Mr. Inglesby. I only wanted to point out that I'm not the one on trial. Quite so, but nevertheless, we've gleaned some interesting highlights about your activities in Africa. Not sufficient to recommend your removal from office, certainly, but quite enough to... Sir Reginald, to send that man back to Liago would be to invite foreign domination. Ah. Your opinions are not the concern of this court, Tarzan. Is there anything you want to add to your testimony? No, sir. Captain Lawrence? I think not. Then it shall be up to the members of the court martial to weigh all the testimony that has been given to determine whether Captain Lawrence is guilty or... Sir Reginald, I should like to ask the court to instruct its members to disregard all testimony offered by Tarzan. Every word he's spoken has been proven... Utterly devoid of foundation. The members of the court are hereby instructed to disregard that portion of Tarzan's testimony which was unsupported, that concerning the activities of an unidentified man with yellow eyes. For certainly no concrete evidence has been presented to prove that he exists. But if the jury refuses to believe he exists, there can only be one possible verdict. The remainder of your testimony is admissible, Tarzan. Perhaps it will carry some weight. Court adjourned until tomorrow morning. Sorry, sir, but you'll have to be shoving off the zoological gardens close at this hour. I was just going. I'll walk you to the side gate. A bit closer that way. Ah, look at all them people on the benches there. Think they'd know enough to have themselves home at this hour. Your feet giving a spot of trouble, sir? I dislike the wearing of shoes. I can't say as I blame you. I'll lift mine off soon as I get home. 
Don't see why anyone wants to put harnesses on his trotters. Or walk them off in this here park, for that matter. I thought perhaps being near a few familiar animals might make London more tolerable, but seeing them behind bars is hardly a cheering sight. Well, here we are, sir. Good luck to you, and you don't get in a flap about them animals. They have it a bit of all right here. Warm cages inside when it gets cool, and better eats than me and my old lady. Nice green trees to look out on. Uh, now, you take them folks over on the benches. If they don't trot over here to the park, they probably don't see a spot of green from one bank holiday to the next. And more than likely, they don't... The animals! They're loose! Well, there's a man over there by the panther's cage. First, I thought it was a panther when I seen his eyes, but he's got a gun, sir! Stand can... back so I can throw this knife! No! The elephant, sir! Sir Reginald Lindsay and another high official asking to speak to the likes of me. The old lady will never believe it. Considering the panic that spread over the entire city, it's a wonder the Lord Mayor hasn't been here. Well, he was here, sir, right after it all happened. Never mind, it was here after it happened. I understand you were in charge at closing time. Well, that's right, sir. Did you see anything of an extremely powerful-looking man, uh, dark hair, worn longer than customary, height a uh, little over six feet, eyes gray, complexion uh, very suntan? Uh, you mean Tarzan, sir? You see, Sir Reginald, he was here. Mm. This should establish that his entire testimony is worthless. He's a madman with a mania for freeing animals, even though it imperils millions of lives. If you don't mind, sir, it was him what saved the day. He headed off some elephants just as they was about to attack some innocent bystanders. Then he jumped on top of a ruddy elephant and herded all the poor, confused animals back. And then what he did out in the park, he tracked down one at a time, though it took most of the night. He's a blooming hero, the way I sees it. And I won't stand for now we'll talk about him. Where did he go when he'd left here, Hobson? Why, after the bloke had opened the cages. A nasty-looking blighter with yellow eyes. Yes, at last Tarzan was in pursuit of his elusive enemy, following a trail of blood, for his knife had found its mark. The spoor led him across most of Bloomsbury, by the British Museum, and then down Fleet Street, and sped over miles of this jungle of concrete and steel. The city was beginning to awaken now, and as the streets filled, the trail became harder and harder to follow. Just off Cannon Street, it disappeared entirely, but then miraculously appeared again, and as curious Londoners stared at him, Tarzan hurried along, following the faint scent until he was within sight of the Tower of London. Just beyond it, his eyes found his enemy, frantically climbing to the upper footway of Tower Bridge in a vain attempt to escape his pursuer. But as Tarzan scampered up one of the huge chain suspensions, the man leaped into the river far below. While a fascinated crowd watched from the embankment, Tarzan plummeted down after him into the icy waters. And only an hour later, the man who'd been dragged from the Thames faced a room full of grim officials. We have your entire history, Hakim Cluden, <coughs> a record of sabotage and espionage so damning that you have little to lose by answering our questions. I shall answer them. I've spent my life perfecting my skill, and yet when I came to them dying from a knife wound, they turned me away like a piece of broken machinery that's of no further use. Our agents have already called at the little building off Cannon Street. What we want to know now is whether your employer ever enlisted Mr. Inglesby's assistance in your African endeavors. We did not need to enlist his help. He volunteered it. Did you hear that, Tarzan? He's lying! Oh, he was not conscious of it, but everything he did antagonized the natives. I was most careful to avoid killing him, to come only close enough so that he could build up a strong case against Captain Lawrence. With that done, I set out to kill Tarzan. And with that failed, I freed the animals last night, counting on Inglesby to blame the jungle man. He tried. With Tarzan and Captain Lawrence out of the way, Inglesby would have had supreme command in Liago. That was our hope. For with the natives hating him more with each passing day, it would not have remained British Liago for long. Very well. That's all we need to know for now. Take him away, men. Captain Lawrence, you'd best prepare for your return home with full authority in Liago hereafter. The court's findings will be a mere formality. Inglesby, we'd better have a little chat. Tarzan, no words can tell you how much I appreciate all you've done for me. 
including the breaking of your vow to permit such a great journey. The longest journey I took was a mental one. I had to cover a lot of territory before I learned that there's nothing to fear in the large cities if all goes well, that cities are merely a different kind of jungle. Oh? Then I suppose there's no sense in your bothering to leave one jungle for another, eh? I assume you'll remain in London? I think not, Captain Lawrence. I think not. <laughs> They came into the jungle in quest of a fortune, and though they scoured the bush, they sought neither ivory nor precious stones, gold nor other metals. And although their art consisted of smuggling, they dealt neither in slaves, opiates, nor contraband arms. Theirs was a strange game, but they'd failed to anticipate an adversary like Tarzan in our story of Two in the Bush. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. <laughs> <laughs>